and they'll never forget to love you. And we are back once again looking at easy and cost-effective ways to improve the quality of our pets' diets. Today, we are turning our attention onto what is possibly the mightiest superfood you could ever feed your dogs and cats, and quite possibly the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. And while you might not want to eat it, trust me, your pets love the liver. You know, it makes me really sad. Everywhere I go, I see people giving their dogs and cats these horrible wheat-based treats. Those types of cookies offer no nutritional value at all and are actually doing quite a bit of damage to our pet's health. Not only are they testing very high for glyphosate and other pesticides, but they're also high glycemic, pro-obesity, pro-diabetes, and also contain natural chemicals such as phytic acid, which bind to minerals, actually stealing important nutrition away from our pet's bodies. Please do not be one of those people. Please do not feed a wheat-based treat. Our animals are already eating more than enough junk in their daily food, and one of the easiest ways to greatly improve the quality of our pet's diets is to simply choose their treats more wisely. Instead of choosing more junk, we can pick things that our pets love even more, that they crave down to the genetic level, and that also act as a whole food vitamin mineral supplement, adding back in vital nutrients that are necessary for every single function of the body. Enter the liver treat, here to save the day. If something like this is not one of your go-to moves when you think about giving your dog a tasty snack, then in my opinion, you and your dog are really missing out. I want my cats eating liver too, but I'll show you how I feed it to them later. Right now, let's just focus on why I never want to leave out the liver. For starters, I was not kidding when I said liver is possibly the most nutrient-dense food on the planet. See, Chris Kresser would agree, and so would Dr. Eric Berg. Just look at the impressive list of nutrients on that board. We're about to take a look at a few of those, and a few more not even listed. But first I want to clear up a common misconception about liver. Many people seem to think that the liver stores up toxins, but that is incorrect. What the liver stores up are nutrients, and at concentrated levels. When it comes to toxins, the liver metabolizes those nasty things to be removed from the body, but they are not stored there. That being said, I do have a high standard when it comes to where I source my liver from, and I only want to purchase liver from healthy animals, from grass-fed, pasture-raised sources. I will not sacrifice quality to save money. Right now I'm using this product from Pet Lab Co. I have the chicken and the beef. It's made from animals humanely raised at pasture from a farm in Texas. And yes, I did ask them before I chose to use this product, and any product I use will meet these standards. This is what you could call a minimally processed whole food. It's been chopped up and freeze-dried raw to preserve all nutrients, enzymes included. Besides that, nothing else has been done to it. If we take a look at this product from Pet Lab Co. and compare it to this low-quality liver treat I found locally, you can see what I mean. I want liver to look like this, not like this. And these are without a doubt one of the best snacks you can give your dog. And it doesn't even have to be every day. Liver packs such a punch that your pets don't need a lot, but they do need it regularly. Not only do I give these as treats, but I also incorporate them into full meals once or twice a week. I'll have separate videos showing you how I do that for my dogs and cats, but really simple, you can throw a few pieces in with dry food or wet food to make the meal more nutritious and appetizing. But now, let's take a few minutes to look at the nutritive qualities of liver and why those nutrients are so important for health. Let's start with B12, because that's a nutrient most of us already associate with liver. But did you know that liver actually contains all of the B vitamins? Why is that? Because liver is a very metabolically active part of the body. In other words, it's a place that produces and uses a lot of energy. The energy we're talking about is in the form of ATP, and is turned into usable energy inside the cell by the mitochondria through oxidative phosphorylation and the electron transport chain. In order to complete the conversion from food into energy, many nutrients are needed. Since liver is dense with mitochondria, 
we know that it will also be dense with the nutrients needed to produce energy. This includes all of the B vitamins, but you'll also notice CoQ10 on this list because, you guessed it, that's another nutrient needed to complete the electron transport chain. People pay a lot of money to get CoQ10 in a bottle, but here it is naturally occurring in food. Another one of these important nutrients that you may not have heard of is NAD. In a few years, it'll be the new CoQ10. And I'm sure there are also many more things in there that have not yet been discovered by modern science. But we know for certain that all nutrition needed to support mitochondria and the production of energy will be in there. When we feed metabolically active foods like liver, heart, and muscle meat, we are supporting energy production. When we support energy production, we are supporting all functions of the body because all functions require energy. In addition to that, B12 is needed for DNA synthesis, red blood cell production, and to build the myelin sheath that insulates all neuronal cells of the brain and nervous system. For that reason, I consider B12 one of the most important nutrients for the long-term brain health of my animals. Real quick, I want to highlight a few more of the B vitamins that are stored in the liver, because I'll be mentioning them again later. First, there's folate, also known as B9 which, amongst other things, works with B12 for DNA synthesis and for the production of new cells. Dr. Berg lists this as folic acid, but I'm pretty sure he means folate, folic acid being the synthetic version found in supplements. Also involved in these processes is B6, called pyridoxine. The other one I want to point out here is riboflavin, also known as B2. According to Dr. Mercola, riboflavin is essential to numerous body processes including cardiovascular and skin health. It's also important for the absorption and digestion of other vitamins and minerals, including iron, which is another important nutrient found in liver. In addition to that, it's needed for brain health, eye health, and is involved in the recycling of glutathione, one of the body's master antioxidants. Glutathione, which is another awesome nutrient stored up in the liver, is needed by every single cell in the body to protect from oxidative damage. It's needed for immune health, detoxification, and to prevent the runaway inflation that's a component of all chronic disease. This is something else that people pay a lot of money to get as a supplement, but again, here it is, found along with all these other essential nutrients in a food most of us would rather throw away. But your pets know better and they would never leave any liver to go to waste if given the option. Moving down the list here, we see that liver also contains all of the fat-soluble vitamins, A, E, D, and K. It's well known that liver is the absolute best source of vitamin A, but did you know that the vitamin A in there is in its active form, called retinol, and is therefore utilized extremely well inside the body? Many people think that plant foods, such as carrots and sweet potatoes, have vitamin A, However, that is not exactly true. What those foods have are pigments called carotenoids. These pigments are the plant-based precursors to vitamin A, but have to be converted into retinol through a metabolic process once consumed. This is true with pretty much all plant-based nutrients. They're all precursors that cannot be used directly inside the body of an animal. They must undergo some process to make them active and usable. Some animals specialize in converting plant nutrition into animal nutrition. Those animals are called herbivores. So a cow, for example, is very good at this. Other omnivorous animals, such as a chicken, are also good at making these conversions, but the same is not true of our dogs and cats. Being carnivorous animals, they're dependent on those conversions being made inside the body of prey animals. It's just part of nature's grand design. The herbivores eat plants, they convert that nutrition into the active forms. Then, when a dog or cat consumes that animal, they get the active nutrients in a highly bioavailable form that's ready to go. And that's what evolution demands of their biology. So if you think giving your pets carrots will supply them with vitamin A, you'd better think again. Vitamin A is important to the body in a variety of ways, including for proper immune function, eye health, skin health, as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, amongst other things. However, there is a potential for toxicity if too much vitamin A is consumed. 
This is especially true with the synthetic version, and almost all commercial pet foods will contain a synthetic form of vitamin A. Since my pets eat commercial pet foods as well as any liver or fresh foods I may give them, I'm careful not to give too much. I'll explain in a moment how I avoid any potential toxicity. Another hugely important nutrient found in liver is vitamin D. But unlike humans, dogs and cats cannot get vitamin D from sunlight. It has to come from the diet. And I want my pets getting real vitamin D from whole food sources, not just from the synthetic supplements most commercial pet foods rely upon to meet AFCO standards. When I think of vitamin D's role inside the body, I think that it just makes everything work better, plain and simple. Having adequate levels of vitamin D definitely seems to be protective against pretty much all disease, cancer included. And it's well known that vitamin D is necessary for the proper metabolism of calcium. Another lesser known vitamin that is also absolutely necessary to properly metabolize calcium and by that I mean to make sure the calcium we consume ends up going into our bones and teeth where we want it, instead of into the arteries and soft tissue where we do not want it, is vitamin K2. For more information on that, check out the book Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox. Not only do I want my pets getting K2 to maintain healthy bones and teeth, but I consider it one of the most important nutrients for the prevention of heart disease. And K2 is kind of hard to get in the diet, and I do not see it added to many commercial diets. But speaking of healthy teeth and bones, if we take a step back, we'll see that liver is loaded with just about all of the cofactors needed to properly get calcium in the bones and teeth where we want it. Vitamins A, D, and K2 all play a role in this process, and the liver is also a good source of phosphorus, another nutrient involved in there. While there is not a lot of calcium itself or magnesium in liver, just about everything else we need for this is. Now, also looking at the same group of nutrients, we can notice that we're talking about the nutrition associated with animal-based foods. I'm specifically looking at the active vitamins A, D, K2, B12, and the long-chain omega-3s EPA and DHA. None of those are found in plant-based sources, and many of them also just so happen to be the nutrients most people, and pets, are most likely to be deficient in. I consider these nutrients to be some of the most important for overall health and longevity, and these are the nutrients that every carnivorous animal craves and depends on. If you saw my previous video on sardines, you might have noticed that I'm highlighting the same nutrients. You'll also find all of these in heart and other organ meats and in eggs. But the thing about these different foods is that they have the same nutrients, but in different ratios. Liver, for example, is very high in vitamin A, but much lower in omega-3s, while sardines are much lower in vitamin A, but much higher in the omega-3s, EPA, and DHA. By rotating through these different food sources, we're creating a well-rounded profile of these nutrients in our pets' diets. I never want to give too much of one thing. It's all about the balance, and that's how I prevent any potential toxicity. Rotating between all these different sources is, in my opinion, the way to go, and the only real way to create a true and complete diet. I talk about that a lot more in this video here. Another essential nutrient needed for properly functioning cell membranes that's also found in liver is choline. In addition to being one of the main components of every cell membrane in the body as phosphatidylcholine, choline is also used to prevent any fatty buildup in the liver and in the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, needed for proper nerve function and many other things. I could keep highlighting the nutrients in liver all day but this video is already way too long. But before I stop, I just want to point out that in addition to the vitamins specific to animal-based foods, liver also has the vitamins associated with plant-based foods, vitamin C and E. Did you know that there's vitamin C in meat? Yes! Us humans don't make our own vitamin C, but most animals do, and it's made in the liver. 
vitamin C also just so happens to be another one of these cofactors needed for the proper metabolism of calcium and collagen synthesis. And vitamin E is being used as an antioxidant protecting those cell membranes we were just talking about. So yup, that's in there too. I cannot think of any other food that has the same complete profile of vitamins. Perhaps that's why liver has the word live inside of it. And because I want my pets to live as long as possible, I feed them liver regularly. I'm about to wrap this video up. Before I do, I want to talk a little bit about genetics. As I mentioned earlier, the liver is always one of the first things to go when a predator consumes a prey animal. Knowing this, we can say that it's part of the ancestral diet. By adding foods such as liver back into the diet, we can say that we're feeding for the health of the very genes. We can look at this figuratively by knowing that we're feeding the same foods that kept their ancestors healthy and able to reproduce. But we can also look at this idea scientifically. Many of us think that our genes are fixed, and many of our genes are, such as the genes for eye color and whether or not my dog has hair. But many of our genes are not fixed, such as the ones involved in health and longevity. They can be either turned on, off, or be somewhere in between. This includes any so-called oncogenes, which make someone susceptible to cancer. Those would be genes that we definitely want to keep turned off. The science of flipping on and off of genes is known as epigenetics, and one of the main ways the body keeps its genes expressing in the healthiest possible way is through the process of methylation. In other words, well-methylated genes are happy genes. The body uses methylation for many things, actually, and it's one of the main ways that the liver metabolizes toxins to be removed from the body. But in order to methylate, the body needs specific nutrients called methyl donors, many of which we just talked about, such as B12, B6, folate, riboflavin, and choline. These are nutrients that give up or donate a type of chemical called a methyl group. But again, the form of these nutrients matters. Take B12, for example. In order to donate a methyl group, you need the form of B12 called methylcobalamin. However, most B12 supplements, like those found in our pet's food, use the form cyanocobalamin, which instead of having a methyl group, has a cyanide molecule. Not exactly the same thing, is it? You can read all about that in the book Dirty Genes by Dr. Ben Lynch. I'll also link to a great podcast with him below. I also want you to keep in mind the fact that the body uses these same nutrients for many different things. What that means is we need enough to meet our daily requirements, and only after those immediate needs are met will the body even think of being able to methylate genes for long-term health. You know, because if you can't stay alive right now, then long-term health just is not important. So by feeding liver regularly, we are doing all those things in one fell swoop. We are feeding to meet our pet's daily needs, but we're also promoting long-term health, longevity, and the best possible expression of your pet's genes. So I don't just feed liver to promote the longest life possible for my pets, but also to promote the healthiest life possible. To support this channel, the best things you can do for me at this time are to like and subscribe and let me know below if your pets love the liver like mine do. Remember, I'll have separate videos showing you some of the ways I incorporate liver into my pets' meals, so be on the lookout for those. Thank you very much for watching. All the best to you and your pets.